This is Lakeside to London. We're chatting with Regan Lamble from Athletics Nana Wadding, who joins us now from St. Moritz in Switzerland. Regan, thanks very much for speaking with us. Uh, they tell us that St. Moritz is one of the best high altitude training facilities in the world. Can you tell us a little bit about the setup that you have there? Yeah, it's um, an amazing place, St. Moritz. Um, so basically, we've been here for a week and a half now, almost two weeks. And uh, basically, we're here because of altitude training. So it's um, essentially about 1,800 metres above sea level. So um, we train around the lake here, and that's about a, a four-kilometre loop or four-and-a-half kilometres. And then uh, we also train out at uh, the nearby airport, which is about a five-kilometre loop. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a great setup. Obviously, everything's sort of out in front of your door and, um, we've also got uh, physios traveling with us and masseurs and everything like that. So um, we've got it all set up really well and there's heaps of other international athletes around. So it's a, it's a really good, I guess, environment for athletics and in particular endurance sports. And um, yeah, it's just an exciting place to be, I guess, before London. And to be there with the whole team and some of the more experienced guys as, I guess, one of the up-and-coming athletes uh, must be a really positive thing for you as well. Yeah, yeah, it's great to have um, older guys around as well, I guess. Um, I'm probably one of the only, oh, uh, Becky Lee, I suppose, as well. But I think everyone else, all the other walkers here have uh, already been to the Olympics. So it's really good to have those guys around. Um, I mean, they just obviously let you know if you need help with anything. They let you know, you know, how it's going to be like. And um, just training-wise, they're always, you know, knowledgeable and things like that. And so you learn a lot from them and very fortunate to have I mean, obviously, people like Jared, particularly Jared Talent around, who's, um, you know, obviously preparing to medal at the Olympics and things like that. So it's um, certainly exciting to train with them. Uh, I guess if you don't mind me saying, you were probably one of the real surprise packets of last year's World Championships with your 15th placing there. Uh, has, has that impacted at all on how you approach London and how ambitious you are with your goals that you go about there? Um. I think, yeah, last year I guess it was a bit of a breakthrough year for me. I guess more than anything, I it was a good year in terms of the transition from junior to senior and I think in a few ways we probably exceeded a few expectations with that just um, with how seamless the transition sort of was. So in that sense, I suppose leading into this year we sort of thought, um, you know, hopefully I could then improve on, on how I did in Daegu last year. But I think... Um, this year's sort of been, I haven't plateaued, but I think uh, just naturally with progression, things don't always go, you know, um, as maybe as quickly as you want them to. So I think we're just sort of plopping along at the moment. And um, in terms of goals now, I guess, um, probably realistically, I think I can form a goal in Daegu um, and committing the training goes well over the next few weeks as well. Um, hopefully I can still improve on that. But yeah, I don't think, I think, you know, we're still pretty realistic with my goals and we're not setting them too high at the moment because obviously I am still a developing athlete. So, um, yeah, we're just going to really use it, I guess, the Olympics. We're going to give it a red hot crack, but we're not going to sort of blow a gasket or anything. I guess one of the real big tests for you guys in the lead-up is the World Race Walking Cup event that you have, and this year it was in Saransk in Russia. Uh, how did you see that and how did you rate your performance there? Mm. Um, yeah, well, it was, was not bad, I guess, as I said earlier, like, um, I guess I sort of haven't had, um, you know, a really a perfect sort of lead up this year, I think, just in a few ways. I mean, training's been going great, but yeah, race-wise, I don't think I've been able to translate my training into a, a great race yet this year. So, having said that, I think World Cup, though, was okay in the sense that I knew um, I've still got a lot of room for improvement in terms of racing, so... Um, given my result, I came uh, 25th, I think, overall, and um, I think I was about 30 seconds outside of an A qualifier. So I think given, you know, where I am in my preparation for London and things like that, World Cup uh, wasn't too bad a result, I suppose, if you look at it long term. And guys like Jared and Nathan Deeks have obviously certainly helped the cause, but uh, race walking maybe isn't a sport that always commands the spotlight. It must be nice to, uh, to head over to an environment like Russia where it really is a thriving event and, uh, and get your own little time in the sun there. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, Russia was actually, uh, the racing surrounds was an amazing experience just because, um, yeah, I think some countries sort of view 
red smoking in a bit of a different light compared to Australia. I mean, we get obviously great support over here, but just in terms of, I think, general interest, it's um, really big in countries like Russia. I mean, they obviously they're very successful in their own right, so um, it's quite a popular sport, I suppose, in some ways over there. And um, I mean, to go over there and have the opportunity to race in that environment was um, was really fun because they just get really into it and we got massive crowds turn out to watch, which is something that we don't get, well, all the time in Australia. We, we good support, but not massive crowds as such. So just little things like that, I think, um, you know, make it a bit more exciting and hopefully, I guess, in London it'll be similar environments. So, yeah. Regan, in my own dealings with athletes, I've found the talk of arts, literature, culture has often fallen on deaf ears, so it was uh, very refreshing to see your AOC interview and see that you rated The Beatles among your favourite artists, To Kill a Mockingbird among your favourite books. Uh, do you see yourself uh, having maybe a bit more of an artistic or cultural side to you than people might expect of an Olympic athlete? Um, oh, yes, I suppose so. I mean, I think everyone's different in their own way, really. I mean, I, um, yeah, I suppose I've always been... Oh, I guess artistically inclined maybe I don't know <laughs> what you'd call it um yeah but I think it's good because um you know it gives me something else that's completely non-sport related to have an interest in and um I'm studying graphic design at university which is you know that keeps me occupied in my spare time and I guess it's just completely um yeah different to what I do training wise and how I spend the rest of my time training so um yeah I mean I guess, I don't know whether people find that surprising or anything, but, you know, I enjoy my, I guess, creative hobbies. And uh, guitar playing as well, I think, was another one that I forgot to mention there. So, uh, clearly a girl of many talents. Oh, I try. I'm terrible, though. So, well, if you had me play, it probably would be, you probably wouldn't say that. <laughs> Just over three weeks now until London. Uh, what's the plan between now and then? Uh, yeah, so we'll be here for in Emirates for another two weeks, um, and then we go to Varese, or uh, which is in northern Italy um, near the European Trade Centre. So we're not—I don't think we're quite staying at the ETC, but we'll be based uh, really close to there just because of how busy it will be around that point. And um, yeah, we'll be there for two weeks, so we'll be expecting a lot warmer weather than we've got here in St. Moritz at the moment, and then. Um, We'll travel to London on the 5th of August. So we'll be entering the village um, a bit late in comparison to a lot of other athletes, I suppose, just because we don't race till the 11th of August. So we're just trying to, I guess, um, stay out of that busy village environment um, just because we're right at the end of the Olympics. So probably don't want to be too excited in the lecture. Well, Regan, all the best for the coming weeks. And once again, thanks very much for chatting with us. Plenty more interviews to come on Lakeside to London, so keep following the hashtag L2L on Twitter as we announce our schedule there. And if you have any questions that you want us to throw to our athletes, use that same hashtag to put them to us. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Lakeside to London. Mm -hmm.